Introduction. Topics covered. 1. Types of evidence. Primary versus secondary sources. Evaluating sources. Criteria for credible sources. Citation styles. Common citation styles. In-text citation and reference list for APA style. 5. Best practices for documenting sources. 6. Citation management tools. 7. Conclusion. Hello, and welcome to our video on understanding and documenting sources. Today, we'll explore the different types of evidence, how to evaluate sources, the nuances of citation styles, and best practices for quoting and paraphrasing. We'll also introduce tools that can help manage your citations effectively. Let's dive in. Types of evidence, primary versus secondary sources. When conducting research, it's crucial to differentiate between primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are original materials or evidence directly related to your topic, such as interviews, experiments, or historical documents. In contrast, secondary sources interpret or analyze primary sources, like reviews or scholarly articles. Understanding these distinctions helps in choosing the right type of evidence for your research. Evaluating sources, criteria for credible sources, to ensure the credibility of your sources, consider the following criteria. Authority. Who is the author? Are they an expert in the field? Accuracy. Is the information supported by evidence? Can it be verified? Objectivity. Does the source present information fairly without bias? Currency. Is the information up to date? Relevance. Does it relate directly to your research question? Using these criteria will help you select trustworthy and relevant sources for your work. Citation styles, common citation styles. There are several citation styles used in academic writing, including APA, MLA, Chicago, and IEEE. Each style has its own rules for formatting references and in-text citations. Today we'll focus on the APA style. In-text citation and reference list for APA style. In APA style, in-text citations include the author's last name, and the year of publication. As the name suggests, this citation appears in the text and uses the author's last name and year of publication. For example, many studies have shown that the attention span of many people have shortened with the invention of short video forms like TikTok. Smith, 2020. This excerpt is taken from Smith's research, last name of author, and it was published in the year 2020. The author's full name is John Smith. The reference list at the end of your document should provide full details of each source cited in text. Here's a quick example. In-text citation. Many studies have shown that the attention span of many people have shortened with the invention of short video forms like TikTok. Smith, 2020. Reference list. This is where the full reference list is given. Usually at the end of an article, essay. Smith, J. 2020. The Impact of Information Technology on Society, Proceedings of the 2020 International Symposium on Technology and Society, CAT Tool No. 20 CH36152, P3369 HTT, DOI.org, 10.1 and 209 ISTIS, 2020, 6 Wix 88137. From this information, we can see that Smith's work was published in preceding forms in the International Symposium on Technology and Society in 2022 and other relevant information. A basic reference list entry for a book that you have retrieved from a library database in APA must include 1. Author or authors. The surname, last name, is followed by first initials. 2. Year of publication of the book, in round brackets. 3. Book title, in italics. 4. Edition, in round brackets. If other than first. 5. Publisher. Example. Hasler, E. 2018. The Built Environment. Liverpool University Press. A basic reference list entry for a website must include 1. The basics of a reference list entry for a web page on a website. Individual author. 2. The surname, last name, is followed by first initials, year, month, day, in round brackets. 3. Use the most exact date possible, title, in italics. 4. 
Website name. RL. Example. Johnson. A. 2018. May 24th. It doesn't need to be this way. The promise of specialized early intervention in psychosis services. IEPA. HTTPs. Sash sash IEPA.org. UO. Network. News. It doesn't need to be this way. Quoting versus paraphrasing. Understanding when to quote directly or paraphrase is essential. Direct quotes. Use when the exact wording is important. For direct quotes of less than 40 words, incorporate them into the text and enclose the quote with double quotation marks, e.g. Narrative quote, where the authors are named in your sentence. Weber, 2018, concludes that addressing the issue of school dropout not only affects the education system, but may also serve as a prevention effort for the welfare, mental health, and correction systems. P82. Parenthetical quote, where the citation details are presented in parentheses following the quote. Addressing the issue of school dropout not only affects the education system, but may also serve as a prevention effort for the welfare, mental health, and corrections systems. Weber, 2018, poll 82. For direct quotes of 40 or more words start on a new line and indent the whole block from the left, do not add any additional space before or after the quote. The entire quote should be double-spaced. Quotation marks are not required. E.g. These overload issues can reach across the lifespan and affect individuals in many ways. As related issues continue to emerge, counselors will need to be aware of potential mental health problems stemming from technology overload and continue to research and develop the skills needed for effective interventions. Scott, et al., 2017, PA 605. Paraphrasing. Restate information in your own words to clarify or simplify. Paraphrasing is when you are summarizing the words or expressing the ideas of the authors in your own words. When paraphrasing, you must acknowledge the original source in the text of your writing. Include the author's surname and year of publication in round brackets, or if including the author's name anywhere in the sentence, place the year of publication in round brackets next to the author's name. Leskowitz, 2017 or Leskowitz 2017, still requires a citation but no quotation marks. Citation at the beginning, Leskowitz 2017, describes the transcendent states that athletes experience. Citation in the middle, sport viewed as a spiritual path, Leskowitz 2017, and one that is frequently followed in the West. Citation at the end, athletes using techniques adapted from holistic and complementary medicine, Leskowitz, 2017. Both methods, quoting and paraphrasing, require proper attribution to avoid plagiarism. Best practices for documenting sources. To document sources effectively. Keep track of all sources from the beginning. Use consistent citation styles throughout your work. Double check all citations for accuracy. These practices will enhance the credibility of your research. Citation management tools. Managing citations can be overwhelming but tools like Zotero, EndNote, and Mendeley can help. Zotero, free and open source tool that integrates with browsers for easy source saving. EndNote, offers advanced features and extensive citation styles. Mendeley, provides social networking features alongside citation management. These tools streamline organizing references and creating bibliographies. Conclusion. In conclusion, Understanding different types of evidence and evaluating sources critically are foundational skills in research. Mastering citation styles and knowing when to quote or paraphrase will enhance your writing's integrity. Utilize citation management tools to simplify this process and ensure accuracy. Thank you for watching. We hope this video has equipped you with valuable insights into documenting sources effectively. Don't forget to subscribe for more educational content.